<laughs> this is going to be a real talk video. <laughs> I feel like that was real loud. Um, <laughs> I'm full of so much good energy and it has been some time and it has also been some time since I have been real with you beautiful beings and myself if we're being real. <laughs> Uh, I fell back in my cave for a little bit. I did. I got sick um, and I needed to rest and then in the resting the old parts of me started to come back and like the old programming of feeling like I need to constantly be doing things and the fact that like what I've been trying to create and manifest isn't here when I want it. I fell back in my cave, feeling sorry for myself, crying, just emotionally beating myself up. It was not a good time. I do not recommend. <laughs> I, don't, I don't recommend. Um, but I'm sharing this because I just want you to know this journey. We're going to fall back. And I've been doing this for years. So be kind and gentle with yourself when you do fall back into like the cycles and the programming and putting yourself down it's okay when you fall back but when you do be kind and gentle with yourself because otherwise it's just a way more miserable time because <laughs> when we fall back there's lessons in there there's things we need to dig through like me when i got pushed back into this last cave my ancestors were like you still got shadow work to do and i'm like nope <laughs> I did all the shadow work. I'm good, y'all. Y'all are wrong. <laughs> and um, my ancestors are never wrong. I was wrong. And there is still shadow work right now as I speak that I still need to go through and make feel safe for me. Because <laughs> for me, because... Like, I'm a seer, and that makes it so much harder for me because I'm impatient, and that's a lesson. I'm still learning. I'm really trying. Um, I'm a seer. So I can see different possibilities of my future. And the fact that they're not happening yet, I started to, like, get upset with myself, and I'm like, what's wrong with me? And then my ancestors were like, girl, all these years we've been doing this, you still like divine timing divine timing and i'm like okay and the next day because it's not moving in the way i want i fall back and i'm like why me crying again and then my ancestors are just like sipping on their tea in the back they're just like oh my god when is this girl gonna just freaking chill like literally when is she gonna chill and <laughs> I'm chilling. I am now chilling. I am back to feeding my spirit. And I think for me, why it was so hard, and honestly, this just hit me. Oh my god. Um, give me a moment. That's a lot. Okay, for me, it's easier to go back into the cycle that I've always known that's uncomfortable. That feels stagnant. The cycle of self-sabotaging and putting myself down. And feel, instead of filling my time with things that make me happy, I'm beating myself up internally because I'm not where I want to be. But in reality, now through all this work I've done, I deserve to feel peace. Like... I am worthy of just filling my day with things I love and I tell other beings that all the time because they are worthy you are worthy so if you're worthy why am I not worthy you know and that is a shadow part of me holy crap that we just discovered together <laughs> so I am going to fight that part in my brain that thinks that I am not worthy of living a life that makes me happy because I am and for me I think the reason I'm like so resistant on it is because 
everything I've been filling my day with that makes me happy is things that I was told by either like other beings through my life or society well and both both society and beings through my life that all those things aren't realistic um, they're not something you should be doing because it's just not realistic but in reality we are all creators we are all spirits in a human body human meat suit here to create whatever our spirit wants to create like every single thing we have physically besides like that came from Uchibaka grandmother earth that she created you know everything else was made and created first in somebody's head and then they brought it out into the physical so why am I not worthy of creating what's in my head because it makes me happy why why not why freaking not so so I'm going to continue to fill my day up with painting I've been painting dancing singing I've been trying to make music I've been exploring there um, one thing though is I definitely abuse myself in the way of trying to be a perfectionist. I'm a Virgo. That's something that's just so hard not to try to be as perfect, but nobody's perfect, right? And honestly, it is a form of self-abuse. Queen Herbie, whoo, her music, yes. But it is, perfectionism is, and I have been hurting myself trying to be perfect. When I'm never gonna be. I'm never gonna be. That's just not me. So, I'm just gonna be me. We're gonna be creating without judgment. And that's one of the hardest things so far on my journey is to just be without judging myself. <laughs> so, I'm going to continue to fill my day up with things that make me happy. And in the way that works with my brain, I am autistic ADHD. I have a narrow spicy brain. I am going to work with it. Um, the last time I talked about it, I actually started medication for it a while ago. And I haven't been on my medication for a couple months. It's been a little bit. Um, I kind of wanted to see like the difference. And medication it did help me with being able to like retain information more and being able to focus more. But, um, I've seen a lot of studies on it of, like, it can have bad side effects in the future, and it just wasn't really resonating with my spirit on continuing with the medication. And now I'm just learning that, like, I was so hard on myself that I was like, well, I just need to fix it. I just need to fix my brain. Let's take some medicine to fix it. But there's nothing wrong with my brain at all it's just this society that we're in is made for a neurotypical brain not a neurodivergent brain so i'm just learning how to naturally work with my brain and understanding it doesn't work in a neurotypical way so for me i bounce i bounce constantly from many things i'll be like painting and all of a sudden i want to i want to start writing I'm writing and I'm like, let's dance and then dancing. And now as I'm learning like my spirit, who I am, I'm realizing that for so long I was just fighting myself because I've been trying to find who I am, but because I couldn't focus on one specific thing, I'm like, I'm a failure, there's something wrong with me, why can't I just focus on this thing? And as I'm learning myself, like my spirit and my brain, I can't, I cannot. I'm, I naturally bounce from many, many things. And as I'm learning how to honor that, instead of putting myself down for it, man, like the way it feels and just accepting who I am and navigating how to work with who I am than trying to fit in this box that like colonizers gave us a long time ago and they've been changing it up, but this box that they tell us we need to squeeze into to be 
a good person, to be worthy of a good life, whatever their reasoning is. I cannot fit in that box. Nobody can fit in that box. Some people make it look comfortable, but in reality, behind the scenes, their neck's like this, their like, hands sticking out, their foot's all crooked. Nobody's comfortable in that box. And I am fully throwing that crap away. And I've said this before, and that's one thing too in this journey is we can move forward, but then we also can go back. And that's okay. We are literally trying to reprogram our brain that's a computer. And mine's been programmed in a certain way for 29 years. So <laughs> it's be kind of gentle with yourself while you are reprogramming your brain. Who I need water. Ooh, I'm just getting over a cold, so if I still sound funny, I am still a little congested. So this video <laughs> is just me being transparent that I have been struggling. I've been putting myself down because I'm not where I want to be, but I'm where I need to be. And I'm grateful where I am. And the only reason I feel all this pressure and needing to be where I want to be and have all my dreams happening at this moment is because of what I've been taught by colonizers and they suck we all know they suck so I'm gonna stop listening to their crap that they try to have us listen to doesn't work it doesn't work so I'm just gonna be I'm just gonna continue to paint dancing I'm making music we writing over here I'm doing everything that my inner child's and my inner teen and me has wanted to do with this life. Cause really we come here as spirits in a human meat suit to experience human life on Uchimaka Grandmother Earth, not to chase after whatever. We're here to just be, to just be. So here I am just being, I made some tea, I have Mullen in here because my lungs have not been happy with me, but I am taking care of them <sighs> So if you are in that cave or you end up crawling back in it in time be kind and gentle with yourself We're all gonna be in our cave Occasionally or maybe long long periods of time, but when you're in that cave Take care of yourself self-care, self-love in whatever way you can do that, whether that's like those negative voices come in, you're sitting in bed, eating some ice cream, chilling, and those negative voices are like, hey, you suck. You're not doing what you said you're gonna do. You're not where you said you're gonna be. You suck. You look, you face those voices directly in your head. And you're like, you know what? You're wrong. You are wrong. Right now, I'm sad. I'm feeling sad and I deserve to feel sad for whatever reason that is. But I'm amazing. I'm amazing and I'm going to chill in this cave because I need to rest. I'm freaking tired. I am tired. Life has beaten me up and I am going to chill. You and your negativity can head out while me, little me, and teen me cry together we are crying together because that's all i can do at the moment i'm but i'm not putting myself down because all i can do is cry i'm just gonna cry and comfort my inner child my inner teen and me while i'm in this dark cave and i'm sad but i'm not gonna beat myself up any more than other beings have because i'm tired and exhausted and i have enough bruises i'm chilling so if you can like whenever you can do that I know it takes time to get to that point and it takes a lot of times doing that because I literally this is the shortest amount of time I've been in my cave so hey progress progress I literally can get lost in my cave for months months years even <laughs> we're being real um but I'm back out and I needed to be in it. So whenever you feel called to go back in your cave, it's okay. It doesn't mean 
you're failing or you're behind at all. That's just where you need to be for your growth in whatever way. Whatever way that is, even just to learn how to be kind to yourself. To allow yourself to be sad in the dark cave without beating yourself up. This journey is so complex. <laughs> and all of us will experience it differently. So if my tools don't resonate with you, that's okay. That's okay. There will be other beings that have different tools that may resonate with you. But be kind and gentle with yourself. Like that everybody deserves to be kind and gentle with yourself while you are navigating this human life. It's not easy. Thank you, colonizers. They set it up real crappy. <laughs> but I won't talk about them too much. You're going to hear about them on my second colonizers series. <laughs> Thank you for spending your time with me. I'm going to be spending my day filming a couple more videos to connect with you beautiful beings because... Okay, I'm being real. I'm being real. We're going to be real. We're going to get real deep into it. Um, now, the reason I got back into my cave is because one of my biggest challenges is feeling worthy. Feeling worthy of the life that I've always wanted. And the life I've always wanted is to just be seen, like fully be seen by the beings that I'm around. Not having to have any kind of mask and to just be like my silly, weird self. <sighs> my ancestors, they're like, they're like, we literally have the path open for you. The door is open, walk through it. And as I'm like standing at the doorway crying, <laughs> I'm like, is it ever gonna happen? And they're like, the door, is open. You just have to get uncomfortable. You have to get out of your comfort zone, put yourself out there so that your people can find you. They can't find you if you just stay in this cave crying. It's okay that you're crying in this cave. You needed to do that. But now it's time to crawl out of it. Crawl out of it one more time and put yourself out there so you can find your community. And I'm scared. I'm being real, I'm scared because I don't, I don't know how it feels to be fully seen by people. I know the beings around me love me. They love me. Um, but they're still on their own journey in finding themselves, you know? And People can only meet you as far as they have met themselves. And I know me opening this door and <laughs> showing up as myself will bring beings that have done the work, that know who they are, and that will see me. And I'm scared to be seen because I've never been seen. And like seen where I felt safe being seen. I put myself out there and I've been seen. <laughs> but I've also been heavily projected on <laughs> by all the beings that still have so much so much work to do internally. The parts of me that I have let out triggers. It triggers well, I like the word activate better. It activates a part of their spirit that they are pushing down or whatever have you with that part of their spirit it activates it and then their ego we need ego but ego our egos are programmed to try to fit into the society that colonizers created so ego is like well your spirit right so i let myself shine i'm shining and then the being I'm shining around, right? Their spirit will be like, oh my gosh. Like, this being is letting these parts of them out freely. And they don't care. And they're just being themselves with these parts just out and exposed. It must be like, is it okay to do that? And then ego's like, nah. 
It's not okay. This person that's letting this part of their spirit out, they're in the wrong. So what we're going to do most of the time is we're going to project. We're going to say what others said to us. When we let these parts of ourself out, this part of our spirit out, we're going to react in the way that others reacted to us. We're going to shut them down in the way that we were shut down. And majority of the time, they're doing this subconsciously. They're not even conscious that they are doing this, that they're continuing the cycle that was put onto them that pushed that part of their spirit down. I learned that a long time ago um, as I started my healing journey because when I would let those parts out, I would just see that it was uh, that person, they were just hurt because that part of them is pushed down so deep and I freely would let that part of me out. So they're like, let's shut it down. And I understand it wasn't in like majority, a few, maybe a few of them was in like a malicious way. Maybe. But benefits of the doubt, maybe not. Majority of them, they didn't know because I've also done that too. I have done that too. Where I have projected onto other beings that let parts of their spirit out that I pushed down so deep. I projected in a way that the others projected onto me. But I don't do that no more. I've done the work. And anytime if somebody activates me, I will sit in that. I'm like, what in their actions is making me feel this way? Like, why? What is happening internally? And I will sit with it. So I recommend if you get activated by people, sit with it. Like, really sit with whatever they did. Unless, like, they're just doing crappy stuff. Then, yeah, you have the right to be activated and get upset that they're just doing crappy things but if it's not anything crappy it's nothing mean sit with it as to why that is bringing up those feelings you know i feel like i was going everywhere but i'm out of my cave i am listening to my ancestors again i have been reluctant they always make me get out of my comfort zone but in the there's always such beautiful things. Like, I can't grow if I don't get out of my comfort zone. So here I am, finding my community. Thank you for listening to me. If you're still here, you a real one. Thank you for sharing your energy and your time with me. I hope you have the most beautiful week. If you are in your cave, I hope you are nice and like gentle, kind, sweet with yourself. Give yourself some snackies, eat some ice cream, be kind and gentle with yourself. The cave is rough. It's rough. But you will have times when you crawl out of it and you get to have some sun and let your light out whenever you're ready. There's no hurry. Me? I am out of my cave right now, as as I know right now. I am out and about. We roaming. I'm dancing and living life. We are living. And I'm following my dreams. Not because, like, I have to get it done. I'm creating my dreams because it makes me happy. Yep. Yep. I'm living all my dreams because I deserve happiness. No matter what I've been shown or taught through my life, I deserve a life full of happiness. And I'm fighting for it. I am. I have fought so hard in my life for so many things. I am finally fighting for things that truly make my spirit happy. We live it out here. We are living, we are drinking tea, taking care of our bodies. We're living. <laughs> Even though it's a fight, it ain't gonna be easy. We deserve to live a life that makes us happy. So you go fill your day with things that make you happy. And I'm gonna fill my day up with things that make me happy. Because we deserve it. 
I'm gonna go paint. You have a good day. You have a beautiful day. Don't shock, okay? I'll see you later.